Choosing awesome candle names is incredibly hard and it's also incredibly important because the names of your candles are how you're going to stick out from the crowd in the sea of candles that are out there. In today's video, I want to give you five tips for choosing the perfect candle name. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to Armitage Candle Company, the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. In today's episode, we're talking about candle names. But it doesn't matter if you pick the perfect candle name if the label you're putting it on isn't compliant. So that's like a prerequisite to this video here. And if you want to learn more about it at a detailed level, check out this candle maker's happy hour that we did that or the blog in the description below. But at a high level, your candle needs to have three things in the US. It needs to have a statement of identity, which essentially says this is a soy wax candle or a paraffin candle or a candle just something that very clearly says this is what the product is. It needs to have the net weight. So that's the grams and the ounces of the product inside. This does not include the weight of the container that it's in. And it needs to have its place of origin. Normally, this is the city, the street, and the zip code of the address where this product originated. But if it's available online, you don't have to explicitly include it on the label. It's really important to have these. If you're in the EU, there's three other things that you may have to think about. One is signal words. Typically, the word warning is the signal word that candles trigger in the EU. The second thing is precautionary and hazard statements. This depends on the fragrance oils you're using and the statements that come along with the safety data sheets that are required to be on the label. And the third thing is a unique formula identifier. This is a 16 digit code used by poison centers to identify the contents of the product. Okay, the first guideline is to avoid trademark infringement. And this should go without saying, but if someone has a trademark and you use it, then they have the right to come after you legally and prevent whatever you have, potentially even take profits from you, I think. Um, and that's not okay. Uh, so there's easy ways to avoid this first, if you're thinking of using a name that's inspired by something or just a name that you thought of, do a trademark search. The United States Patent and Trademark Office database is online. You can search it. You can just check your name, see if there's a trademark. If there's not, you're clear. If there is, well, you could be in, in a bad area. I just wouldn't recommend Just stay away from it altogether. You hear about this all the time. These Etsy stores that are getting taken down because they had Disney characters, or Taylor Swift songs. So the second part of this is like stay away from movies, TV shows, songs, actual people, and just kind of stick with those original things. The, the third part of the trademark is that don't use offensive or slanderous words. Don't like make fun of people or songs or TV shows or characters or anything like that because they also, that type of language is also protected under trademark law in the United States. So with trademarks, just stay away from it. Do a search online on the database. I'll put a link below to check that out. And, uh, you know, <laughs> keep yourself in the clear. The second guideline is don't use the fragrance oil name as the name of your candle. That is very tempting because the, that is the scent or that was thought through. But a lot of those fragrance oil names are also trademarked C.1. So as cool as it would be to have something that's called a walk on the beach or lover's lane or whatever the fragrance oil name is, Stay away from it. The third guideline is a little more tactical for arriving at a name rather than just saying stay away from these other things. And that's to ask for feedback. It's easy enough when you're by yourself coming up with all these awesome names to think, you know, this is the best name that's ever been chosen ever. It's another to actually ask for feedback and hear what people think. So there's a pretty simple process that you can use if you're a little bit stuck on this. So first brainstorm a list of names for your new candle, then pour a batch, then write down your favorite name, in addition to a couple other ideas that you came up with on sticky notes, burn them hot or cold for people around you and have them choose from that list of names. See where they kind of land on your list of brainstorm names or if they have an idea of their own, they can give that to you too. And see how that lines up with your own idea of what you thought the name should be. It's a little humbling sometimes and I wouldn't necessarily go with everything they say, but it can be helpful to try to hear what people think about the names you have because when you called something live, laugh, lilac, maybe that was not quite as cool as you thought it would be, Richard. But if you use the feedback method, that can be great. Another way is just pour your candle, label it, use your name, and ask people what they think of the name that you chose. Does that make sense? Does it work? The fourth guideline is be concise. There's nothing worse than coming up with this great name and finding out that you can't stick it on the label. So in addition to like coming up with a cool name, you got to think about like how it's going to be presented. This is 
both in product descriptions online, but also on the physical label itself. So conciseness, keeping that thing short and punchy is a little more preferable in a lot of contexts. Very few candles are going to survive when they're called sweet, purple, floral, and fauna, fun, friends, fragrance versus live, laugh, lilac. A loose rule of thumb to follow is keep the name under 25 characters long. That'll fit a lot of labels. My fifth and final guideline today is to use your collection theme or brand. Your candle business or your candle operation has some sort of story behind it. And the more that you can tie what you're doing into that story, the more powerful those names are going to resonate. They have a theme. This is more strategic in nature rather than picking these one-off candle names that describe that candle by itself in isolation. You start to build this long story about how this all product line all kind of lives together and breathes out your brand fragrance into the world. So if you have a collection, which is more seasonal in nature, try to build names that kind of fit that collection. You know, if you have like a desert collection, go for sunsets and moonlights and, you know, walks on the beach, things like that. Like try to tie those names into that a little more than just this smells like amber. This smells like honey, you know, build it into the collection. If you have a theme, if you're like a nostalgic type brand, or if you're a New York brand, you know, tie your candle names into that larger theme. Try to lock into that as the foundation and the anchor, because then it's a lot more consistent and people kind of look forward to what those names are going to be rather than just well, it smelled like this. They actually know the name of it. My favorite example of this is the Harlem Candle Company out of New York. They have things that are based on nightclubs and speakeasies and a lot of cool neighborhoods of New York. And every candle, every product they have in their store, which actually goes beyond candles, all ties into their theme of New York. It feels really bougie. It's really tight. Check it out. I'll put a link below to Harlem Candle Company. That's all I have. I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful candles and I'll see you in the next episode.